uh, and they come to understand how a, an all-seeing eye, uh, um, a, um, uh, the warrior symbol, the, uh, the, the, the virgin mother, um, how these things can be added to the arsenal of manipulation tools and so on, then basically what you are seeing is what I call the illuminated ones. Uh, that permeate the history of the Saturn death cult down through the ages. These are the most dangerous people on the planet, psychopaths with this kind of knowledge. Absolutely, I completely agree. You, if you open the door and you, as my grandma used to say, a closed mouth catches no flies. So if you information, they will use that against you and against humanity, and that's what we're permeating. But I, like you, I have hope we are strong, and it doesn't take very few, it doesn't take a lot of people to permeate the veil of truth, seriously. Um, yeah. I think that we underestimate that in this reality. I mean, we're living in this craziness, and sometimes people get caught up and get twisted up. But the fact of the matter is, the paradigm is changing, and we are literally going in a new direction yeah. by me talking to people like you and Thomas and other um, innovative thinkers, if you will. It is quite a breath of fresh air. And I just have one more question because I, I, you know, sure. there's, so, there's so much, uh, you know, to, to talk about, if you will. And I could literally mm-hmm. go on forever and ever. Uh, where is my question? Why? It, okay, so... We're going, I'm going back to the beginning of the show. We talk about Stanley Kubrick mm-hmm. and it's his scenery, his visual scenery of this whole Saturn death cult. Mm-hmm. Why, obviously, are we going to Mars? What is the deal? I mean, why are we really mm-hmm. going to Mars? What what role does it play in this whole paradigm of like what's going down on the burner right now? Right. Okay, so when you're saying why are we going to Mars, why is there the emphasis on going to explore on Mars, right? Yes. Um, and, and there's always been this fascination. I mean, you go back to H.G. Wells with his, uh, you know, War of the Worlds, they came from Mars and uh, so on. And um, Mars, Mars as an archetype uh, is in the human psyche is the uh, red scarred warrior. Um, now, Mars has a very special uh, place in the human in the human psyche, in that uh, he, as an archetype, it represents rebellion. It represents the ability to fight back, uh, to supplant, uh, um, you know, whatever. Uh, in, in, in the case of Mars and Venus and Saturn, uh, what Saturn was uh, throwing down. In other words, Mars becomes the uh, archetypal hero, and it is the hero that is so incredibly, uh, um, oh, cracky, what you'd say, uh, uh, sort of burnt in to our psyche, that just about virtually all of our stories, and I'm not just talking about mythology, I mean, it's there in every movie, uh, every successful movie, you can break down the story down to the archetype of the, of, of the hero. Um, and uh, the, this is the role that Mars played in, in the breakup of the, uh, Saturn system of planets. Um, it was not only a, a terror uh, to, to individuals on Earth when it broke out of its um, out of its position under Saturn um, and Venus, but it also engaged in conflicts um, with Venus, which uh, underwent its own uh, very traumatic transformations. Venus was a beautiful goddess who transformed into the Medusa. The um, uh, the, the the hideous uh, um, witch kind of uh, uh, character of uh, mythology, and it is the hero, um, as we know, you know, mythology. Uh, um, the uh, cutting off the hero goes in and cuts off the head of Medusa. Uh, it's the hero who defeats uh, um, the um, the evil side of the beautiful goddess, and usually as a result of uh, interacting with the. Uh, sorry, the, the the evil side of the beautiful goddess, um, and and usually does so after interacting with the with a beautiful vision of um, of uh, the um, uh, Venetian um, uh, Venusian uh, um, archetype, and then uh, defeats the sort of evil transformation that has uh, uh, undergone um, in in Venus, 
And this, this is why we're, we as a species are fascinated by Mars. Mars was also possibly the last planet um, to be witnessed actually having interaction uh, with the Earth. Now, when I talk about interaction between planets, I'm not talking about near collisions uh, and things like that. I'm talking about things that happened over millions of miles. But because of the electrical interaction that, went, that took place, these giant thunderbolts, these uh, meteorite storms uh, and so on, would take place. And from what I can work out, the last great uh, event, catastrophic uh, planetary event uh, that, that threatened life um, on, on the planet uh, was a, re a result of Mars coming too close um, to the Earth. Uh, but during that time, uh, Venus was also sweeping by, settling into its orbit, and Mars and Venus underwent a huge interaction, a huge battle, uh, before, they, before they settled into their current orbits. And uh, it was that battle that gave uh, the red planet its giant scar, which today is the um, uh, Valles Marineus, Marin the, um, the, the thing that makes the Grand Canyon look like, like a, a scratch in the sand. Uh, it's just this enormous gouging uh, that, that is on the surface of the planet that is in no way explained by geological formation through water or anything like that. It's, it's such obviously uh, the result of massive intellect, um, electrical arcing uh, taking place between planets. Um, but that has burned into us now, into our collective psyche. And uh, I would say that that event... Uh, took place as early as uh, 1500 uh, BC, uh, which is a mere three and a half thousand years ago, um, and that's why Mars is so important to us um, as a you know as a species. Wow, I I tell you, there's just so much to talk about, Troy. I so enjoy <laughs> um, spending time with you, and I'm so thankful uh, that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to visit us at the A Show Network and I hope that you come back oh, my pleasure. when you have new projects or things of this nature on the burner. Now family, make sure that you go to the Saturn dot com. That is the Saturn dot com and also go onto Amazon dot com and type in Saturn Death Cult onto your search engine on Amazon and you'll be able to download um, Troy's wonderful book and things of this nature as I stated at the beginning of the show make sure that you open up your consciousness in your brain because let me tell you you're going to read something you're going to have to stop then you have to gonna go to your search engine and you have to type in some a few things so you can do a research and come back because that's the type of information that Troy is giving up on the burner he really makes you think well from my perspective anyway he makes you think he makes you um, create these connections, and you'll be you'll have a, a million in one tabs open. So just brace yourself; it's a wonderful thing. Knowledge is power, and I send you so much love, Troy. Thank you so much, and I hope mm. to talk to you again very, very soon. Oh yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to come back, uh, dear. Um, fantastic uh, to be able to uh, take part. Absolutely, and family. On that note. I, I bid you adieu. I hope that you gained tons of information from um, our conversation, being the voyeur and our conversation. I send you so much love, family, and until next time, bye-bye.